Hello and welcome to another um, devlog update of this uh, samurai game I've been working on. Um, so this week um, we kind of had some cleanup and some exploration into some new features. So um, yeah, I guess one of the first things we did since the last uh, devlog was we created a, um, a day-night cycle. I don't know, I just thought Perhaps the day-night cycle would be cool to have, um, depending on how long the, the levels take to complete. So I haven't really even gotten to a full read, like a level design kind of block out yet or anything. This is really just kind of an arena. Um, so depending on where we take the game, having a um, having a day-night might be pretty cool, especially I think. Um, one thing I've been thinking about is taking this, um, it's kind of my, my plan from the beginning for this game was to keep it kind of like as a small action game, right? And kind of get a bunch of mechanics created and set up as a game and then release that. And then it, if people like it and uh, if I'm still going strong with the samurai theme, I have some ideas for kind of more of an adventure type of game. So. That's what I was thinking. Um, so that's kind of the reason behind the uh, the day-night cycle. So you can kind of see, I have it just basically set to uh, kind of morning and then it starts off pretty early, right? But the, the sun is rising here. You can see that it looks pretty cool over here. Um, and as it gets higher, it gets, you know, not as extreme on the player character. Um, the other thing that I did in addition to the um, uh, the sun um, sunrise and sunset was the um, the tilt shift effect. So you can see here, there's kind of this camera blur around the areas that the that are not the focal point of the. Um, the player. So I think I realized that the uh, the sound for the game is probably not working properly for you, but I will fix that in one second. Um, yeah, so the tilt shift, um, I think it adds kind of this like toy-like feeling to the game. It's kind of neat. Um, also just it looks, looks visually neat. So I think as long as it doesn't get in the way of the action and like what's happening where the player needs to look. Um, you can see here we just um, had sunset now it's darkness and uh, one of the things when it gets dark like that is uh, the map is pretty dark if you don't have anything in it so you can't and the ninjas are dressed in black which is pretty funny right there's my buddha with his flaming lanterns um, there's a couple different lantern effects in here you can kind of see how the lanterns the ones that have like um Kind of blocky like this one it's hard to tell with all the ninjas fighting me but um like the light shoots out of the lantern in kind of an interesting way although it's a little extreme i think like the, the center one is very much like that too you can kind of see the shape of the lantern so i think as i go oh i died um as i go i would probably try to make this a little bit more subtle um all right so that's a day and night um we have a day and night cycle and we have that blur to make a tilt shift effect. And, and that also has to do with like the angle of the camera. Um, I brought the angle of the camera um, uh, into more of an, I think it's like, it's actually less isometric and almost more a little bit side scroll. If I look at the camera, we can see it's at like, um, it's like 60 degrees, I guess. So I think traditionally, um, I think isometric is at 45. So anyway, it's a little bit closer to the ground. And then uh, the distance is, is not too far away. Um, it's pulled in a lot more so you can get more character detail and stuff. So um, yeah, kind of see that. Okay, um, let me fix the sound for... Now you should be getting my desktop sound. 
Okay. Um, yeah, so what else have we been working on? Um, the other kind of tangent that we went on was uh, there was a bug um, in the stamina of the uh, player uh, from last week. So um, let's see. So this recharge stamina basically um, just every time this was called, it would add the recharge stamina rate to it. And we weren't um, checking this value at all. We just kept adding, I think it's like five every, every second. I think it's called every second. If we find the reference for this, we'll see. Um, set timer by function. Yeah, so it's over here. So yeah, so every second we just loop like literally from the beginning of the game. Um, so like if there's a long period of time when you're not, um, you're not uh, dashing, the recharge rate actually would build up. So it starts off at 100 and then it just kept adding five. Um, so within, within a few seconds you had a lot more extra uh, dash power essentially. Um, and, uh, um, a dash only uses, I think, 10. So uh, this would, this kept going up and up and up. And then um, you get to the point in the game where like your stamina bar would never go down um, as long as you were taking breaks between dashes. Uh, so the solution to that was to put in this uh, clamp. So a clamp just um, takes whatever value you give it and says, make sure it's between the first value and the second value. And um, so you can set it, say like, I never want it to go below zero and then I give it a max. So I gave it a max that I can modify if I want, like later on rather than hide it in here. But um, yeah, so I just said the max is 100. And uh, so as long as it's in here, it checks um, when it recharges. And then I actually don't know if we, when we do the dash attack, do we, so we actually don't, um, don't check to make sure we're below zero here too. So, but we do prevent it from, we do prevent it from, uh, from running if we're, um, if uh, our stamina is lower than what it costs to, to do a dash. So, um, but probably another place that we could add it is right here. So you just, just go clamp. and then clamp float. And then you say this is, we want it to be zero for the minimum. And then the max, you still have to make sure the max is correct or else I think it will, I don't know. I'm actually, I don't, I don't think there's a scenario where it would trigger the max probably. Um, okay. And so I have these um, variables over here um, and they're in kind of different um, categories. So I have like some uncategorized ones right now. Um, but then I also have like constants and stats. So the stats, um, I'm not sure it's a really good descriptor, but these are kind of ones that are kind of in gameplay, I guess. So like things that we're like monitoring, like the stamina, um, our current XP, that's that blue bar, which, uh, when you collect little orange things, um, kind of a vampire survivors style thing that is, is going on in the current video game world. I don't know, uh, I'm a little mixed on it, but uh, it, it could be a fun mechanic. Uh, I don't know if I really wanna go completely survivors like, but anyway, that's what the uh, XP is. And then um, uh, can attack it and hit points, you know, so we're tracking those things. So those are kind of like gameplay stats. Maybe that's what I should call them. And then constants are more, these are things that we can set at the beginning of the game and they shouldn't really change. Um, I could foresee like a power up, I guess, where your your um, your rotation speed go becomes faster, or your dash speed comes faster, or or maybe you can get more stamina than a hundred. Um, so anyway, the the actual max stamina is a constant, and you're supposed to just set it at the very beginning of the game. But I guess we could change it if we had power ups or something.
I don't know. Um, or you can have like a power up that has like a buff and then, but again, we'd have to fix these clamps, right? Because right now we're saying you can't go above. Um, so anyway, this is how we fixed the stamina. And so this should check now and say, okay, well, if we subtract these two, um, don't let it go below zero, right? And then it will return the values, the same value that we're getting here. It should return here. Um, I, unless we start playing with how much the dash costs, this math should just work out because uh, everything's in increments of fives and tens. So the dash cost is 10, the dash um, uh, recharge is five. So there's a point where you have five, you might get all the way down to zero and then you recharge in one second, you get five, you still can't dash, right? So um, maybe I should change that. But anyway, that would, that would stop you right here because we still don't have as much stamina as we need. So we wouldn't subtract 10 here from five. So I don't think this will ever happen, but anyway, if we started really mucking with the numbers, I guess it's possible. I don't know. All right, and then, yeah, so that's just how we probably can get rid of this now. All right. And whenever I add anything, I like to check, you know. We're just going to go. Uh, yeah, so that's a bug. I don't know. You probably have seen it before if you've been following the channel. Oh, yeah, that's right. I do have a couple different um, control versions right now that I'm kind of testing out. So... Um, Right now, if I use my right mouse, um, these are not official keys for the game, but if I use the right mouse, I just dash in the direction that the, the player is facing. So like that kind of scheme is good on a controller, right? So like maybe you have kind of twin stick controls where you can kind of face wherever you want and then um, you dash. And then the original thing that I created was you just click um, and wherever you click, you dash to, which can be cool. It's actually, um, I didn't find it as intuitive as uh, I originally thought it would be, at least from this like game perspective. Um, all right, I'm out of stamina, so that's working. Um, yeah, I don't know. You just, you're not. Unless I put like a like an aiming line or something in here, I don't know why we would. Like it doesn't it doesn't feel like clicking on the screen. Is a is like aiming, I guess. Is, is the thing like it's hard to line up your shot, I guess. Um, anyway, uh, so the dash, um, and then it's very hard to. You know, pick a point on the screen with a controller, right? It's kind of janky. Like you could have like a aiming reticle or something that you then move around once you're in dash mode or something, but I think like a standard dash length that, you know, you get stopped if you hit something, but um, that's kind of what I was thinking. Although, uh, if you noticed, um, I have, uh, I turn the collider off when the player um, attacks, um, partly because I want him to be able to like whip through all the enemy crowd, right? and Technically, um, the dash should trigger against everything in, in a line. Um, and if it does that, then um, uh, it should hit all those people. But um, in order to kind of do it right, you need, to, you need the player to fly through everyone first. And then that was like the attack. And then we register the hit on all of the people in the way. And then they, they do their damage you know, scenario. Um, uh, when they go into Ragdoll, they're no longer really like a, um, a blocker for the player. But if I do the Ragdoll before the player actually commits the dash, then it looks really weird because all of the enemies, especially how long the dash is, all the enemies along the line start falling over before you even hit them. So um, that's why I, I have the player currently turns off um, the collider. So uh, the answer to that would be to go into the um, the character and like you know take a look at the the um, the collisions here uh, 
And so under collision, we have like the pawn preset, right? So, so what does that do? It, it, uh, it blocks, you know, almost everything, right? Um, so we turn that off when we're dashing, but we could add another collision layer um, and or I, I don't know, I'd have to look and see, but you could definitely manipulate like what our collision type is, right? I'd have to see. But we could create a whole nother collision style, right? Or a custom collision. And then what I would like to do is just turn off collisions to pawns, right? Because that's, that's who I'm hitting, right? But I would like to stop the player's motion if they hit like a world static. So um, just some more research I have to do. Like if I go into the um, the dash, oh, I'm in the dash, here we go. So this dash is, um, it's a big switch case um, I've cleaned up recently. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know if I've shown off how the dash works, but I can uh, just demo that real quick. Um, so you see here we start, we check our stamina if it's good we um, turn our collision off. So yes, this is what I'm talking about. So I wonder, there, there might be other types of collision modifications that we can do here, um, but like, right now I turn it to off, which allows me to like move the character freely, but it also makes me clip through walls and stuff. So like you could do like a, a dash through a rock or whatever, which I guess is cool, but. No, not really realistic. And I think you should stop when you hit the hit something. Uh, but that also means that we have to make sure when we're doing our our uh, our attack here that we also you know get blocked, right? Um, and I believe that we don't get blocked, right? Um, How can I do this and have it be, uh, let's see. Okay, so let's do this. We'll compile and save. And we'll, I think we're gonna have to get into our test map because in the test map, no one tries to kill me. All right, so here's our guy. And uh, so you'll see here, okay. If I go and click over here, it's going to draw a a, um, a sphere cast, essentially. And you see it has these two things, and then, right? And then uh, the other option I have is this, um, like wherever I'm facing, right? So let's say I'm facing this way, and I just, I'm just going to press the button, I'm not even going to. Like you'll see if I click over here, it's not gonna matter. So it just, and it's a standard length. So that that's currently how my, like my controller sort of works, right? So you kind of making cool lines. Okay, so, all right. And I have this problem with this animation thing that it works fine. It's just on, there's some frame where it doesn't work um, and I don't know how to stop the race condition. Okay, so we have these guys here, and what do I want to do? I want to I want to put a I want to put a, a like a rock in the way. So yeah, we just put a uh, let's just put a cube here or a wall or something, right? All right, so. Okay, so now if we press play. Okay, so technically we shouldn't be able to, let's see if it was my controller dash. So I go right through, right? And that's because we just don't have any collision on our guy. Now, the other thing that I wonder about is, I don't think that this wall stops the check between here and there. Like, I guess like in some ways you don't, like if we, figured out the clipping through the wall, right? We obviously don't want to cause this ninja damage, right? So if we were to go across like that, it's red, it's green, and then it's, you know, it does it again, right? So we've just 
clipped through the wall and done damage to two guys and it worked out fine so funny that it like turns green let's see I guess it turns green when it hits something so like does this oh I guess they do attack if you get close they just don't they just don't fight um, yeah um, okay so those were hits okay um, yeah, so that's something I have to figure out, is this, this wall clipping piece. Anyway, back to this. So um, so we do a sphere cast, as you can see, I just demoed that. Um, we'll, we'll turn that off again. And I don't think I even have anything in the actors to ignore, but, um, and currently I think we're just, we're literally just doing pawns, but um, that was something else we could do with dashes and stuff, we could have it particular objects. I think this requires an object type, so you have to put something in. Um, yeah. And uh, I don't think there's an option to look, be like, and if it hits a wall... Yeah, I don't think it does. Okay. Uh, come on. All right, so what this does is it goes through, it draws that sphere cast, it captures everybody that we hit and puts it in this uh, array. And the reason why it does that is because we want to, um, we don't wanna cause all the enemies to ragdoll immediately because we haven't even dashed yet. So um, then, uh, this function is basically like make sure the actor is facing the direction of the dash um, and then uh, We set ourselves to invincible as well. So while you're dashing you can't take damage And then we play the slash animation and the, So that's inside the event because I'm pretty sure you can't play montages in, in a function So I had to go back to the event graph um, and then this just plays our our dash um, montage and the montage from there starts triggering other stuff so um, that's actually where like the um, the logic for like okay when do we dash I, I, I feel like this is like a pattern like this is how um, a lot of games do stuff it's like when you have complex animation like if you want more gameplay things to happen you have to cue them off the animation so I don't feel super comfortable having like the next step in this process be in a different place, but um, I don't know if anyone has a comment on that. How how do they do it? Uh, that'd be cool. So yeah, let me just I'll just um, pretty sure it's the dash attack. It's this one. Okay, so this montage basically has him unsheath his sword and then slash, and then he puts it back. Um, and you see here, we have a trigger for take sword and sword back. And okay, so yeah, actually, there's there's no like event graph in here, but there is this these triggers here. Um, notif anima uh, animation notifies. Okay, and so in the animation blueprint, that's what I meant. That's where the other logic is, and that that's still in the file with the with the player which is cool okay so the animation blueprint this is like the you know you've probably seen the anim graphs like this um, so we have this little default slot here that allows us to drop montages onto the um, the locomotion so the locomotion just basically is between idle and walk right now this doesn't do anything, it literally just sits here, I'm pretty sure. Okay, um, and then in the event graph, you just need that um, that little interrupt between the locomotion and the output in order to be able to fire off montages. Um, so in here, 
we're just getting the pawn. This is like where there's something wrong with this. Um, like this fires off all the time. Uh, and uh, yeah, when this fires off all the time, it fires off before begin play somehow. I don't know. And then it doesn't have the pawn. Uh, that's where the error comes from. Currently, you can see like I had some logic to check if the character was there was not there then to get it but like literally this would run all the time but, but this works so I don't understand why it always thinks it's invalid when it when it's actually valid so it's very very weird um, okay so anyway there's logic in here right so um, uh, there's a constant update to check for velocity for your player character and then it also checks to see if you're actually uh, this looks weird okay anyway um i had some logic for slashing in the animation blueprint like to prevent the attack the uh the movement but i don't know if i really need that anymore um anyway here are the notifies so when we take the sword out of our sheath that means we're ready to dash and so we we call this equip sword function okay um, there's also some other montages that instead of take sword there's an equip sword one there's some check hits with the regular slashes there's um, to check like when the sword is out and like has slashed enough it will check to see if the enemy is in range and then there's a piece here for like allowing um, the player to hit multiple attacks, so doing like a combo, which is what I was experimenting with this week too. Um, anyway, if we go, so this calls a equip sword. So we just went out to the animation blueprint, started the animation, the notify happened, the animation blueprint picked up on that notify, and then it sent us back to the player character. And inside that yeah it equip sword dash right so there's a couple things going on here but um we have a i equip sword dash completely devote um, a particular one just for dashing because it has all this other logic in it which maybe we should change um, and then i have another one that literally just equips the sword so yeah like i said there's there's some need for <laughs> some updates but yeah so that that animation triggers the next part of the dash like it could be like i have like a start dash and an end dash function already like this could be like the middle dash or something um where we equip the sword and then and then go through so it adds the dash effect it plays the sound and it da and then we call a dash and dash is another kind of thing that requires to be on the event graph so we dash through, we run this timeline. It basically m moves our character. Um, and it just, it just updates the, the character location over the course of like a second or less. And then we call the end dash and the end dash cleans it up. So dash effects, we're not invincible anymore. Um, I used to try to put um, some blood out there when we stop that. And we enable the collision. So actually this is interesting, right? Because this isn't hooked up. So where do we damage the attack, right? So Um, I believe it's in the animation blueprint, so let's see. All right, the whole game works on magic. I can't even tell you. Let's see, this. So this is, this is it, damage dash targets. It loops through our array that we made earlier and causes the damage. 
and then it clears out the attached targets. So let's find out. Find out references. This is not logic I created this week, but I thought it would be interesting to show off. Um, yeah, it's in n dash attack, but it's not hooked up. Ah, it's part of this sequence here. Hmm, interesting. So, um, yeah, which is fine. This is happening at the same time, essentially, as this timeline. So, like, once this timeline starts, it's pretty fast. And so, um, uh, the way a sequence works is actually these are almost asynchronous in some ways. It doesn't wait for this to finish. Um, so it just kicks off the timeline and then it goes down and, and causes the dash text. So, so that's a, an interesting thing. Um, I'm going to delete this because that's confusing to me. Um, and that's fine. So that's where, that's where it happens. Again, um, there's like way too many pieces of the dash that kind of bother me <laughs> between jumping back and forth from the animation and then the event graph and then a function. Like I would almost rather have it all in kind of one function, but there we are. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's another thing that we've been working on, I guess, on how the dash works. Um, the uh, the, the extra piece of that was the, the kind of tangent I went on this week was I figured when, you're, when, you're, when your stamina goes down, there's got to be another thing to do. And, I mean, it's pretty standard that you have, like, other attacks, right? So um, this is still an experimental mode to me because I feel like this might be something for, like, you know, the sequel, essentially, right? Like the bigger game or whatever is he can slash and then if I if I keep going he'll do a second slash and um, as you might see like the animation cuts off it's really weird um, and I, I, I don't know if it's like I don't have enough frames or something in the animation blueprint I have no idea so I'm pretty sure the yeah. Anyway, so this is what I was working on this week. So I was um, animating and um, trying to figure out how to do kind of like a combo montage um, or like a list of montages that you could do. So I've seen it done a couple different ways um, on the internet. And I haven't quite figured out what's the best way. Yeah, there's definitely a, a need to organize this. We've had a, a lot of kind of prototyping going on here. Um, yeah, so this is the attack, right? Um, and we can't use a do once because we need to be able to click it multiple times. So it's very tricky. I don't know, it feels very buggy. Um, but what it does is it says, like, which version of the combo, which version of attack are we on, right? So it's a combo list. And then it will play that montage from this select here. Right now there's only two. Um, but it will play them based on the increment value. And then in here, we can allow it, um, we can allow them to be interrupted to allow for another attack. So... Um, but not until like they've slashed, right? And then we reset the variables in a couple different places, and like I don't quite understand like which one means what. Uh, so like it, it's quite possible that some of the jank is in like the reset or something. But um, yeah, so that's that's kind of where I was going, but I don't know. I might drop it to to be honest. Um, I think it would be cool to have kind of like an attack mode that wasn't a dash, wah, right? Um, and that one kind of does like damage. Um, like right in front of the character, so it doesn't do the full, like it doesn't, it can attack like probably like three people like in front of them, but, but not like a giant line of, of stuff, so. 
See, that's how I hit him without any sword. Pretty cool. So, and I don't know why it's stuttering too like that. It's kind of weird. Um, so anyway, I was working on that. So that took some time, and uh, it, I did spend some time in Blender to do that. Um, and then the other thing that I did was I created a samurai base. So, and this gave me all manner of problems because my um, my three D models are all messed up in terms of their um, their sizes. Uh, like I originally was like, okay, well the the Unreal size is like a thousand times less than than and uh, um, Blender, and I think I um, I think I overcompensated, and and inside Blender, my characters are like a uh, hundred meters tall or something like that, and if you do bring them into Unreal in that way, they uh, they actually are like 100 meters tall, so it feels like in some ways when you when you do these merge, um, when you do these exports and imports, like um, it might not even matter about the the import size these days. I'm not sure. So anyway, uh, what what did I what did I do to have to deal with all that? Was I wanted to take the hair and the hat off the main character, so we we're just left with his. Uh, currently with his clothes and his body, which are kind of the same thing. Um, surprise, he doesn't actually have legs. Um, uh, which would be a problem if we decide that he doesn't want to wear a kimono sometimes. But um, yeah, so right now I, I I got rid of those things so that I could maybe switch hats or, or hair and stuff. So you'll see like in the main, the main, the character now, I just have the hair equipped. So, and I should be able to switch, but I will tell you right now that it could go crazy. Let's see, so I focus on this guy here. So here's his hair, and if we just go down to like the visibility, what is the, is the visibility thing. There's like visibility and then show in game or something, hidden in game. I really I, I really hate that there's two of these, but um, also I feel like the fact that they're not like named similarly means like I can't find them. Like, can I type in rendering? Is that where we will get this? See, what rendering has tons of stuff. I guess that's at the very top. Okay, so I want it to be invisible so I don't have to see it right now and I want it to be in the game and then I'm going to switch to the hat and I'm going to make it visible and I'm going to put it in the game so so now he's got the hat and we can you know programmatically obviously uh, do that so now he's back to normal um, it looks to me like his hat is like one of those Star Wars hats where it's like sticking way out in the back so got to figure out that um, they're kind of matching to the like where I put the socket, but the socket is really kind of, it should be aligned to the center of the character's head and the center of this hat. And is the hat moved or something? Let's look. Uh, let's see, hat, okay, get rid of rendering. So the hat is in a zero, zero, zero position, so. Well, uh, yeah, it wouldn't even matter, I don't think. I don't think we can make an offset because it will just parent to the socket and then it will change, I think. Well, maybe not. Let's see. I think that's probably fine. Looks less dumb. Let's see if it actually takes or if it moves back. Oh, yeah, so that's it. I just had to adjust the hat to be um, in the correct offset. I don't know. I don't like it. It's a little bit magic numbery, tweaky. Also, like, think about that scenario for 20 more hats or something, right? Okay. So that was the other thing that we worked on. Um, that was kind of it. I don't feel like uh, a lot of, like, actual progress has been made. So I think a goal for this coming week is to look more at our... Um, just like the main ga gameplay loop and maybe create a new 
Yeah, we'll have to save everything. Maybe create a new a new level, you know? Um, let's map out a level and see how it looks. Like, I feel like it's gonna be a little bit survivor-y just because I wanna have like a bunch of mobs to fight. But um, I don't know, we can probably make some interesting levels out of, out of the assets and things like that, so. Um, remember kids to save your work and Make some commits. Modified animation and stamina. I forget what I did. And hat. What else did we do? I don't know. We messed around with the test level. I don't know. Okay, doesn't really matter. Commit um, and push. So I'm mainly using this as a backup, but if I start going crazy, I'm going to make a new branch and. and and play with it. Um, you may have you may have seen when I was updating the like some of the mesh and things like that. So I have a um, uh, GitHub uh, large file storage. So that's what's happening in here. Um, and you'll see most most assets in uh, Unreal are these binary files. So you can't actually do like a like a code merge with uh, blueprints and stuff. So, um, but um, what this does offer me is like kind of a point in time for all of my game development. So, you know, I could revert all the way back, right, to a different version of, of this game, you know, or I could have thrown out what I just did, things like that. Um, uh, so, and then also I have a backup, so I could download this game uh, onto a new machine, or if my machine blows up, I have it. So. Those are kind of the main uses for GitHub for, for at least my understanding of Unreal projects. So I think if I was doing C++, I could do more, um, more code related uh, Git stuff. But um, right now it's really just kind of like a save system, a backup system, and a, like you could go back if you made something crazy. And, and you can make a, a branch and um, and make a bunch of changes. I haven't tried to like merge a branch into a master branch in Unreal, so I think it just overwrites. It just says, okay, we're taking the new, so I don't know. Uh, it would just have to overwrite whatever assets you've changed if that's how the merge would work. Um, so I think, I think it would be um, uh, for, you know, especially for a solo dev, it's probably fine, but um, if you're working on a branch, you kind of have to stick with the branch and either either merge it to master or throw it out. But um, don't like start adding another branch to master, especially if it has the same uses the same assets, because I think then you're there's no way you're gonna fix the conflict, right? Um, yeah. Wow, that was a good way to end this video. Is talking about GitOps. Um, okay. So anyway, I think everyone should probably use some sort of source control, if not for the source control itself, but for a way to back up and undo issues. So yeah. All right, yeah, so like I was saying, next week, I think I'm gonna work on the main game loop here, try to figure out, maybe maybe we actually try to try, try to do some of this like what is the experience points do and how can we do some power up type stuff um, and an interesting level i think those are kind of the two pieces that i think we should do maybe clean up the code some more that is a sticky note i have not taken down from my board um, and yeah we will be streaming every morning at like 6 30 probably unless i get sick or something or I get, you know, pages for work at the middle of the night and can't wake up. Other than that, um, yeah, we'll keep working on this. And uh, I'd like to, you know, try to keep the development cycle for this particular game to a short. And so we're we're up to one month, is what we are here. So um, I don't. I think it's going to take more than a month to get it to where it needs to be, but. Um, 
like I said, I think I'm going to try to focus on kind of the simple game mechanics and levels and the game loop and then see where we're at, see if we can maybe make some content. And, uh, the other idea was uh, I wanted more enemies, so that, that would take some time, like creating another another character, so yeah. Maybe a boss fight, so yeah. All right, thanks for tuning in.